now let's focus our attention on the VSFTPD server. VSFTPD is a, an acronym for Very Secure FTPD or File Transfer Protocol Daemon. And it features FTPD, which means file transfers using the standard file transfer protocol on the internet. It also features a number of security items such as change root, which can force your users into a jail, so a change root jail. As well as anonymous and local user auth, amongst many other features. It's included with Red Hat Enterprise Linux, so let's set up our first task, and that is to install it. It's also protected by SC Linux. So on the remote system, we'll RPM query all grep VSFTPD. This will tell us momentarily if it's installed, and if not, we'll find it in the repository, then use yum to install it. So as you can see, it doesn't exist on the remote system. It was not installed, unless during installation we indicated that we'd like to have the FTP server available. So control F, VSFTPD in the web browser will help us to search for the package. There it is, version 2.05. So again, rather than RPMing the HTTP URI, we'll simply on remote system execute yum install VSFTPD. This will find the appropriate package and respond yes to whatever prompts pop up. And now when we run RPM query all, we'll see that it's installed. Once it comes back, we'll enumerate the list of embedded items that's Reset the buffer, then RPM query list, VSFTPD to see what's included. And it includes, as you can see, tons of documentation. But starting from the top, there's a log rotate entry since FTP servers tend to be busy. or we'll log lots of information per session regarding files transferred in and out of the system. There's a pen file which controls authentication. since Again, the service allows you to authenticate not only as anonymous, but as well as local users. So rather than implementing its own auth facilities as older FTP demons did, VSFTPD has a plugin or a hook to PAM, or pluggable authentication modules. It has its own service entry in init.d. It has an ETC directory called VSFTPD with some files that are important if you want to filter access, FTP users, user underscore list. There's a primary configuration file, vsftpd.conf, a migration configuration file. The main daemon itself in user sbin vsftpd. Tons of documentation. A space beneath anonymous, or before anonymous, beneath var ftp pub, etc. Let's navigate into etc. Again, this is where you'll find the primary config file beneath VSFTPD, amongst others. The FTP users file that you see here contains a list of users who should not be allowed to log on to the system using FTP. By default, the list includes users like root and other daemon users. Again, they should not be granted access via FTP because it is a clear text protocol and if their credentials are intercepted by someone who has access to the network or networks in between you, the client, and the server or between your client and your server then they'll be able to compromise your system so it is not a good idea to permit root or daemon level access via a clear text protocol such as FTP which is why this file is maintained there's also a user underscore list file, which serves a similar function to FTP users 
in the event that the user list deny variable is used and it's self-explanatory it too includes the same list of users you find in FTP users again this file users or user underscore list pertains to whether or not you use the user list directive within the primary VS FTPD configuration file there is the migration script which is a shell base script vsftpd underscore conf underscore migrate dot shell and it's used to migrate older versions of vsftpd dot conf to the new version again the version that we currently have installed as you see in the background is 205 but this migration script will move items for 201 to the new config file directory structure on the Red Hat Enterprise 5 which is beneath VSFTPD as opposed to just beneath ETC and again the primary config file is VSFTPD.conf it includes all of the directives that the server will honor when it starts such as the default allow anonymous as well as whether or not to allow local users this is defaulted to yes so it allows anonymous and local users whether or not to permit writing the umask so when a file is written or a directory is written what will be the default set of permissions 777 minus 022 will apply to directories and one off for files for 644 as well as other directives whether or not there's a log file a directory message if there's a hidden file per directory to be displayed to the user whether or not connections are to be from port 20 when the FTP data protocol is in use and many many other directives now again there's no need to memorize as we'd like to say the directives if you RPM query list VSFTPD you will see that there is a man page for the configuration file independent of the daemon itself the daemon's man page includes startup options however the vsftpd.conf man page includes directives that govern how the system is to bind to the network as well as accept users as well as other options whether or not SSL is enabled etc A through Z the directives are listed when you man the vsftpd.conf file vsftpd also supports rate limiting we should list that as another feature that is the ability to dictate the speed at which users may upload as well as download items from the FTP server and you can tie those directives to anonymous independent of local users so for example you can force anonymous users to one transfer rate and local users to another transfer rate now before we delve too much into the directives how do we actually start VSFTPD well as mentioned in ETC INET or init.d that is there's a VSFTPD entrance which means we can use service space VSFTPD start so we've installed it and we did so using yum yum y install vsftpd now next task is to start the server using service vsftpd start and that will confirm using netstat ntlp grep 21 since ftp listens to port 21 by default let's give this a start from the shell and we'll echo the exit status to ensure service executed correctly then execute netstat ntlp grep 21 where we see that vsftpd is listening to port 21 so the version of vsftpd included with Red Hat Enterprise 5x runs outside of Zyna D. it is started explicitly from etc init d and if you want this service to start up every time the system boots well again check the check config status it's off in all lo run levels so you can optionally indicate the run level that you'd like or just check config vsftpd on 
for all multi-user run levels. So now this service will be started whenever the system comes up. Now how do we connect to the server? Where will we be placed? What will happen? So our next task after starting the server and confirming that it's running, we'll just list as configure service to start when system boots into multi-user run level. And that's simple. Check config VSFTPD on does the trick. And we can follow that up with check, or well, we did follow it up with check config list VSFTPD. Now the next step for us is to connect to the FTPD daemon. There are myriad ways to do so, but we'll begin by using the web browser. So use web browser, which defaults to anonymous. This will test our anonymous connectivity to the server. So with that said, let's launch the browser, and in a separate shell, separate tab that is, we'll connect to 192.168.75.199 using FTP. Let me drop the protocol. And this will attempt to connect us as anonymous. And there you see the pub directory beneath var FTP. Let's just confirm it. We'll navigate on the remote system to var FTP. This is the anonymous space. And there we see pub. Let's see what's currently in pub. Nothing. So when we navigate to pub, we'll see nothing. What if we create a file using sequence? So sequence 1 million. Test or 1 million dot text. This will create a file with permissions that are rewritable by root and readable by root and everyone else. The last three bits indicates everyone else. Let's refresh the web browser window to see if we're able to see the file, and indeed we are. We click on it, it's a text file, which means we will be able to view the contents of the file within the web browser. It takes a little while because it's roughly six and a half megabytes and the browser is designed to pull usually small items, but nonetheless eventually it will be returned or we can kill the process altogether using stop. Text items are automatically displayed by the web browser, so don't expect a pop-up concerning saving the file to occur unless you change the suffix or right button save link as and then indicate that the file should be downloaded. So while this cooks, how about we attempt to connect using a standard FTP client, FTP. So step B for us will be use standard FTP client. as anonymous, just to see how it works from the shell. So let's open an instance here, and we'll do so from our local system. We don't need to be root, we'll drop out of root's shell, and then FTP as anonymous to the IP address. Again, if the host name is configured, it'll work as well. Here, FTP is throwing an error. Let's try it without username. We'll quit and just try to connect to the IP address. Now it